All right, our talk today is about my circle and a little bit of a misconception out there too is that people are thinking it's about cantering a perfect circle. It's got nothing to do with the circle at all. It's a bent line that we're using for an exercise to put our horse on. And what he's gonna do is when he gets close to home, his shoulders are gonna go to home and I'm gonna use this, we're gonna talk about this rear back and pull them through the center. When we're on the off side of the line, you're gonna feel them fade back to home. So the shoulder's gonna drop. So I guess I'm going to the right, so that shoulder's gonna drop like this. And you're gonna pick that rein up and move them back over onto the track, onto the bent line. So really, um, and the third move that we're gonna talk about after them two things are done and he's, he's getting comfortable on the circle, then the third rein maneuver is a softening rein maneuver, which is pulling on, on this inside line, pulling it up to your breastbone, but this foot keeps driving him forward, so it softens up his shoulders, right? So you can keep going forward and teach him, if he'll hold his nose without you holding it, uh, going around a barrel he will not drop his shoulder okay so this this bent line that we're having him on which is a circle the three maneuvers is pick him up and pull the outside shoulder through the middle we're going to slow down a little bit here this move here when they're leaving to the outside when i rear back see how i'm see how i'm getting back on my pockets this does come down to someday is that you can pick up on two reins and your horse understands that there's either going to be a maneuver or you're telling them to calm down but we have to do it one rein at a time first okay let's not get into that too much for right now but when i rear back all i'm saying i'm playing the game with them don't go to to the home so when i rear back i'm like i it's it's a 90 degree or probably an 80 degree angle because remember we have a uh, bullseye in the middle and if I'm going to the right I got to come on the right side of that cone I want that much of a movement through the middle now here's the catch this is why I'm bringing this up when I rear back inside outside if need be and you're gonna have to use the outside when I pull on that outside rein it's coming back by my hip bone I don't want to do like a bicycle and go like this because see what's happening? My power and my motor's hanging out there. So when I rear back, this rein comes back by my hip bone and this foot grabs him in the flank and keeps that motor running to keep him going forward. Now, the inside of your horse, here's what's gonna happen. That's home and as soon as he makes that corner, he's gonna wanna flop back around and get back to home so then he's gonna drop his inside shoulder right at the corner. So picture that corner as there being a barrel there. As soon as I make this and I'm driving them up into the bridle to go to the cone, I'm gonna use more inside foot and probably the indirect rein as if to put them back on the bent line when he's away from home, that body motion, which would be up and around that barrel. So when I make the corner, I don't want the corner like this. I don't want it stiff because stiff's gonna end up like this. So it's like this, and I'm really driving with my body so I get them ribs up and around, just like there's a barrel right there. Someday, this move here will be this move here. Just one, this little joystick. So we're building this joystick. Exaggerate to teach and you refine as you go along. When we were in school, the A, Bs, and Cs were how big? Right, and as, as we got you know, into uh, uh, um, high school, which I didn't get to, <laughs> I think they got smaller so <laughs> exaggerate to teach and you refine as you go along so this is about using this bent line to operate the shoulders and in operating the shoulders we're operating the ribs which quietly um, how do you say this secretly I am pulling on these lips it doesn't matter at this point that I have to rear back and pull on them I'm not interested in the mouth at this time because I'm trying to get him stuck on this circle. I am building a round pen out here in the wide open. Just like Clinton Anderson said the other day on Instagram, set your horse up for success 
So don't go out in the middle of the summer fall of field and try the circle. We need some borders at first, right? So the person I'm making this video for, her horse looks to me like it's like 16.3 and uh, probably is one of them ones that's a little lethargic, meaning, you know, it's a, it's a gasaholic, right? A goaholic. So I'm going to show you some exercises here in a bit to get it ready for the circle. But the other thing while we're on the subject, use three fences. So look at the back of my arena there. Use, there's three fences that I can use to kind of bounce them off of. But the golden rule is 10 feet off of the fences. Because I don't want you to actually bump them off the fence. But you're going to see them head to fence, to fence, to fence. But have a border in your mind of 10 feet off. And when you see him headed to where he's going to cross that border, that 10 foot line, through the middle. Or if he's fading in, out, back out again, right? So we're going to build this round pen because think of it. Why when we do the cold start do we use a round pen? Because when we're in the round pen, they're not, their mind is not wild and wanting to go anywhere. So they end up settling down and we teach them something because they get quiet in the round pen and then we teach them something. Well, we're out of the round pen now. So we're building this round pen out here by using them exercises. It's a cool deal because we get to pull on the shoulders, which pulls on the mouth. And then once we get them hooked on this round pen, then we're going to soften the inside rein. Then we're going to get really down to the nitty gritty and use that third rein position, pull them up to my breastbone and keep driving forward with that spur. And again, people that don't see, take a video of that spur. It's a rock grinder rowl. You guys with them little old peeny ass roper spurs, you're gonna have problems. All right, so I'm gonna bring this up. You're gonna hear, the, my middle name's gonna be, you're gonna bring this up, <laughs> or here we go again. You're gonna notice that with that horse that that girl's riding, she won't turn it loose. She's got a hold of it the whole time. And when that happens, they get behind your, they get in, in behind your legs because you don't want to squeeze them with your legs because you're just going to squeeze them up into the bridle. You have to get these horses let go of a little bit lazy. So you have to push them around with your body and keep them driving in front of your legs. That's the same thing as, as when I, this video also is for another girl, I think I called her Paula yesterday, it's Penny, that when she's going into her second barrel, you can see her tipped forward as her horse kind of pulls the reins out of her hands a little bit to go around the barrel, dropping on its front end, losing its motor. We want the speedboat effect. We're gonna change it from motorboat to speedboat. When, you, when that motor's at the back and you gun it, front end lifts up off the ground doesn't it so it's lighter so you can handle it around the barrels well when she's going into that barrel the horse kind of pulls the reins out of her hands didn't really drop its shoulder a lot but she does say it does hit some barrels now but her look at she's on her front pockets you got to drive them with your core just like this corner that I'm saying when you got to pull them through the middle and keep them in front of your legs but see it's a tough thing on this horse that's that's wanting to run away with this girl it's not really wanting to run away but she's so we're gonna I'm gonna give you a couple exercises for this girl initials MB that is gonna get you ready for the circle okay now here's the first one because this is a problem when I, I'm gonna tie this horse's head around but if I can't get this horse soft on the shank like this right so I can you know do things like this because what's going to happen when I tie this horse's head around, I need him to walk forward into this bridle. You're going to see it in a minute. But see how he's quiet here? And also look here, like because I've done the games, like don't forget about the games, guys. But see, I can tap this horse in the, in the belly and it, it's not going to spook him. All right, so here's the exercise that you need to get your horse good at before you go into that big circle. And you might even consider because um, I went and rode with uh, one of the top rainers one time and I seen him doing this. Um, and 
it, when it wasn't going good, he didn't even bother riding that day. If you can't get this good, you might get this good before you take off into your circle. All right, and the reason that I'm using this horse is because she's not that good at it yet, but you can, I want you to watch here as she gets better at it. All right, over on this side, Marianne. So the first, the first rain position for me, I could tie her head around this horse because she's good. Like I could tie it around at 90 degrees. But at first, come around the corner, Marianne. At first, you might only want to tie, you kind of have to get behind my butt a little bit because I'm going to be going this way. You might only tie it this much to begin with. All right, now, see if I was to get in a bind, I can pull on that shank right there and get her out of trouble because you're, what your horses are gonna wanna do is hit the bit and they're gonna wanna back up. See, I'm teaching her how to walk forward and over top of that bridle or into the bridle, however you wanna word it. My halter keeps her from going to the barn. This needs to get good first because see this horse is following its nose around. Pulls on itself and it finally gets tired of pulling on itself. We'll get out of the dust, Marianne. Yeah. So there, see how I can wave this stick behind the cinch? And this is a tight, they call this a, a long flex. I don't want this horse out on the end of the line right now. This is a little short circle that's going to make you dizzy. But see how I'm behind the stirrup? and I'm driving forward. If I needed to, I'm gonna bump her in the ribs with this stick, just like I was riding her. All right? Ooh. Now, just come behind my butt. So I'm gonna tire, this would be how, how it goes once they get better. So I'm gonna just tire a little bit more. And then remember, I'm stepping back towards the, the flank. Her in the see how she tried to stall out and what I'm looking for here she's creating a feel we're gonna talk about feel here in a minute when I stop but she if I keep her quiet enough she's creating a feel on how to get off of that bridle and her feel there we're gonna I'm gonna number it here in a second we just gotta both of us get our our uh, brains together here. So she's got to stay quiet and go around here. Ooh. All right. And then I let her go. So that's the sh that's the long flex. Okay, let's talk about feel. So because I like to record things in my brain on each horse and then, and then observe, remember, and compare. Observe what's going on today, remember it, and compare tomorrow to what's, what it was yesterday, right? All right, so negative 10 being really hard, zero being in the middle, positive 10 being really soft. So what we're gonna talk about, about this feel that we're creating up there when I'm softening on the back is that when I, pull there's a feel that registers in my head of what this horse's feel is going to be if it happens to be in the end like this horse gets to be a seven softness out of a ten so that registers in my brain and i go on the weekends and harden them up trying to win money and then during the week i come back and try and bring them back to that seven again in my hands each horse is different i had a horse one time that only got to be a four that's as soft as I could get her. Remember, negative 10 being hard, zero being in the middle, positive 10 being really soft. This horse only got to be a four. So when I'd go try and win something on the weekend, she'd get to be a two, then I'd bring her back to a four, maybe get to her six and she'd fall back to a four again, right? So that feel is a feel I'm creating out there eventually, but she's, she's doing it on her own right now. She's feeling 
how to get soft on that bridle as she's walking around. And if you keep her quiet, she'll remember that feel. So now here's the long flex. So I'm gonna, this, now she's gonna be out on the end of the, on the end of the um, shank. And this is what you call a short flex because her neck isn't, isn't flexed so much, right? Okay, you called it a long flex and a short flex. Which long one is, is really bent and a short flex is not bent very much. So okay. I'm going that away. Because okay. she knows the games, I just hold that halter shank forward. And again, I'm trying to position myself back here at her hip bone, somewhere like that. And I'm just gonna walk in this little circle here. And she can just go around there. And I'm just looking for her a little bit. to get a little bit soft on them reins, softer than yesterday. normally do more of that but it's on camera and I just end up etting it out anyway but she was a little bit better than when she started so I just leave it be and then I come over to my other side here all right so that's exercise number one on getting them ready for the circle all right let's get rid of that Alright, so here's exercise number two. This horse is a little green, so let me do this first. Let's just move her hips, move her four quarters. Let's get her loosened up a little bit before I ask her to go forward. Back on my pocket, pull the front end around. Alright, so the next move is you're going to canter to the left. We got to get this going right here. See how I reach around and I grab the back of the saddle and now my toe is turned out as phase one and I'm driving her forward and around over top of that bridle. She's following her nose and this hand is fastened to the back of the saddle. If you hold it off of here she can she can move your hand and get relief, okay? So, and then let her out when you, and, and remember now, don't do too much. Like you can do a little bit and a little bit and a little bit till you kind of get them taught. Like say I was, I was teaching and okay, she tried, rub them, grab the back of the saddle, use your foot. There's a little bit, let it go, rub them. more, move them ribs out of the way, let it go, see because that's the same move you need going around your big circle. This here is getting them ribs out of the way, gets them in an arc, gets them looking where they're going, gets the shoulder stood up and keeps them driving forward. Okay, but the big thing I think that the horse sees is that it's following its nose, right? And tomorrow, don't miss tomorrow, because we're gonna get back on the barrels again and show you how this pertains to the barrels on Royce. All right? The more they wanna pull away, the more you use your inside foot. No outside foot, absolutely none. It's like somebody poking you in the ribs and you're like, and pretty soon you, you go, what? And you give over. Okay, and as I'm talking here, toe out is phase one. Toe down is phase two. Roll the rowel is phase three. And then once you get it, back to phase one, just the toe out. And then look where you're going. See how she's following that rein around, that little arc there? Okay, so that's exercise number two, getting them good at that before you take them to the wolves there and try and counter that big circle. All right, the third thing that I would 
that I love to do. showed me when we were together a while ago, 15 years ago. So I'm going to trot back and asses, back and forth, back and forth. I want to take a little bit of snuff out of a, out of my horse that wants to be a goaholic before I start to canter. So this time you can't fasten your hand to the back of the saddle because it's too much bend. But my elbow is going to be fastened into my rib cage and it's going to lock right here as I'm doing my S's. And I'm again using my foot to go around this S and get a little bit of softness, let it go, a little bit of softness, let it go. And here's the thing, when you let it go, that's kind of, kind of like doing the one rein stop. You're going to grab them and go the other way. Get a little bit, let them go move the ribs and when you move the ribs you're going to see me move the ribs and it's going to start her into that arc and i'm going to finish the arc by pulling with my hand and go that way till i get a little softness all right leg. I feel a little bit of hardness. I just hang in there. See how my hand's on my hip and it doesn't move. They don't pass this test, I wouldn't bother with the big circle. It's never happened to me, but when you're a little bit green or whatever, get them good at that on the ground and then at this. All right, again, we're on camera, so let's go. I'm gonna talk you through my big circle now. This horse doesn't need it. See how I'm, I'm keeping her ahead of my legs. I'm driving with my core, I'm trying to drive her up into the bridle. So here's the thing is that people do. See, they hang on to them like this. But when you hang on to them that much, you're not gonna feel the mistakes. Plus, you're not gonna get them used to you grabbing them and moving them over. Grabbing them and moving them over. Grabbing them and moving them over, loose rein. And again, it's got nothing to do with cantering with no reins. That's not the thing. I want to grab this horse a lot so it gets used to me grabbing these reins. Instead of throwing its head up in the air, it gets to where it tucks its head and gets athletic. All right, so now she knows where the circle is. Here's another thing I'm going to bring up. Caesar, the dog whisperer, what does he do with them dogs before he tries to teach them anything? He puts them on a treadmill or he runs them around five blocks before he tries to teach them anything. So the trot can be an enemy for you because they don't get tired enough. So you might want to counter instead of trot. I want to see how she threw her head in the air. I want her. I'm trying to drive her forward and get her into the canter. She's got to ride up into this bridle. I want her to do them things now rather than at the barrels. grab her and settle her back down. Leaves the circle, pull her through the middle, 
Keep her driving. See that little bit of inside foot keeps that arc in her. Leaves the middle. Try and get back to a loose rein. She's just a little bit lost, so I might have to help her a little bit. Okay, so things get out of control. What do you do? You go back to this. Drive her forward and around this bridle. You can stop them lots and do this. I gotta get her back. And so when they start to lose it mentally, then they lose it emotionally. Walk around, pull her head around. Get them quiet again. Then walk, walk your circle for a little bit. Get a little bit of confidence. Maybe even pull on two reins and drive her up into them reins at a walk. A little bit. And then canter off again. Change her, change her emotion. Kind of started the turn. I don't know if I'm going to make the bullseye. Yeah, kind of. There. See, when I pull, she give to the bridle that time. Still building my round pen. Through the middle, almost an 80 degree turn. She gets to think for herself. See, she thought all on her own and made that circle all on her own. With a bend in her body, reaching with her hind leg, staying balanced. on her own and I'm driving her with my legs keeping her in front of my legs getting her own arc in her body now okay so now I got the round pen built now I'm going to work on softness just that rain
Nice. Okay, so. There you have it. On a review. Start now. So there you have it on a review. We pulled the outside shoulders almost 80 degrees, right? Pulled them through and kept driving with the inside of my body so I get that arc just like there's a barrel here. I don't want to come through it like that, right? So pull, keep driving, keep driving. And finally you get some softness and some movement. And, and, we, and we're getting softness up there. That's not our thing right now. We're worried about just keeping them on our bent line. All right? She never did hardly fall into the middle, but she's probably the other direction. It'll probably might be the direction she falls into the middle. All right? And then just so you guys know, this isn't the end of my pro. We can do speed circles. We can do squares. We do counter cantering. We'll do some rollbacks. So keep following. And as time goes on, we'll do a little bit of them other things. Come back tomorrow and me and Royce will give you a little barrel work and show you how this pertains to the barrels. Instagram account, competitive horseman, all one word. Facebook, Joe Butterfield or competitive horseman, YouTube, competitive horseman. Give me likes, shares, and I love your comments. It lets me know that you guys are watching and I'm not just talking to Marianne, my camera girl. And thanks Marianne and Billy for the place and their horses. Great people, very giving people. Thank you. And then ask them to send you questions, email. Okay. Send me any questions, any anything that I can help with, guys. That's just a little message there on Facebook, whatever. <laughs>